BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. When was the last time you took a look at the asset allocation of your investments? With the recent increases in the stock market, your investments may have behaved differently, with some gaining or losing more than others. This can throw your asset allocation out of balance. If you haven't rebalanced recently, take a closer look to make sure your allocations meet your objectives. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Bundle your home and auto with Farmers and you could save up to 20%. 1 plus 1 equals 20. It's bundle math. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available select like Farmers branded policies subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's Choose the Right Chapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There's an elementary school teacher in Florida. Her name is Edith, and uh, she spoke at a school board meeting last week. And I think Edith is a little fed up because she was like, hey, parents, can you please, can you stop being idiots during your kids' online classes? She has said that herself and other teachers have seen nudity, <laughs> drugs, all sorts of nonsense going on in the background. Parents, please make sure that you have the own proper clothing when you're walking in front or behind the child's computer. Because we done seen them in their drawers, the bra, and everything else. Remember, all children are on the computers and can hear your conversations. So please try to use proper language. No cussing, because if I say just no profanity, they may not know what profanity is. So no cussing, they know what that is. And number four, when you're helping your children at the computer, please uh, do not appear with big joints in your hands and sit Parents, please understand that your child is in class and the parents should not stay in the picture and make silly face behind the child. 2020, the year where I never thought something like that would ever come up. Like that's actual an actual concern for a teacher. So here's I, I mean, this is this is really fascinating to me, because if, in fact, these parents are doing this, how are they not in trouble? Like, if it's not good enough to be seen on screen, like, and I'm and not so much the nudity. I'm talking about, like, the drugs and stuff around their kid. And, I mean, I mean, it, it, yeah, it's one, you know, to be recreational. But I think, you know, to well, just. Well, if it's legal to smoke pot, is it illegal? I mean, it's legal from, I remember my mom smoked cigarettes in front of me and it was legal for her to do that. That's I mean, what I mean. Is it so illegal for a parent to, to smoke a joint? I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, but is it the illegal thing That's, to do? That's, so you and I are saying the same thing. Yeah. Why is it a problem if it's legal or if it's not a good thing? Why are these parents not in any more trouble than just getting a warning? I mean, what, what is this double standard? It's like, well, it's probably like, a, hey, you're a parent. Maybe you shouldn't be getting stoned during the middle of the day. Maybe that should be safe for like no different than, hey, you're a parent. Like she said, I saw a guy drinking a beer with no shirt on at 11.40 in the morning maybe you should wait till like you know 8 p.m when your kids are in bed yeah and that's that's a really good question because you, you two good points steve like sh- do we have to police you or can you put a brain in your head that yes yeah, some legal activity maybe shouldn't be done when your kid is learning and you should be there and then here's the other I, sucky part of it what's that is that you know it is your home you know you're just not used to your home being uh, basically seen by everybody. You know, your kid's in front of the computer. I mean, you know, your kid sees you, you're in your underwear, who cares? You forget that, oh, wait, this isn't them playing a game. This is actually, it's, a, it's basically a big camera on my house. Yeah, but how, I mean, how clueless are you? I mean, you know your kid's home because they're in school at home. Like, if a window's open and the blinds are up, I'm not going to walk by that window naked. I know, I'm, 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 I'm very disappointed that you don't, by the way. I know, you've asked me to, and I yeah. keep saying, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, you should just be like, okay, well, there's that area right there. I'm going to stay away from that area. Maybe I shouldn't be shirtless in the background. <laughs> I do like that she she took a shot at the intelligence of the parents by saying, I got to say cussing because you probably don't know. <laughs> yeah, that was a big shot. I'm like, okay. Uh, but maybe she's like, if you're dumb enough that we have to tell you not to be nude and not to be smoking joints and stuff like that, you're probably too dumb to know what profanity means. Right. Yeah. 
And they're calling it virt. What are they calling it? Virtual etiquette, which is a funny thing because that was something that didn't even ever exist growing up going to school or just living life when I was a kid. Well, just in general, nobody wants to be poor Jennifer. Like, should I be taking a dump while I'm at a Zoom meeting? Probably not. <laughs> right. Make sure the camera's off if you're going to take a shower while Zooming. Yeah. I've done that. Yeah. I mean, I made sure the camera was off. It's that, yeah, that hard. was, I don't like to know. The, now every time we Zoom and we have a meeting and you're not on the screen, I'm like, what horrible thing is Steve doing right now? Well, of co- I could also just be in the room with my wife who's breastfeeding. Listen, I you, you can use that as you can use that as an excuse, but I think you're probably in the shower. Is what I'm. I'm never going to think that your wife is actually doing something practical. I'm oh. going to think it's you just being in the shower. Okay, nine times out of ten, you're correct. Although, yeah. whenever I am on a Zoom meeting where my wife's in the room, she's like, "Make sure you're nowhere near me because I might have to like pull out the boob for for the little baby." See, this is why these new houses, Steve. I think that uh, you know you kind of you poo pooed it a little bit with the last week, with but all the open floor plan versus like the contained versus the Zoom room, the Zoom room, the Zoom room is only for zooming that way. Nothing like that could ever happen. You won't have that news reporter who's catching her naked uh, husband in the shower. You're not going to have the what was it, the uh, Chris Cuomo out in the yard naked. You're not going to have any of that if you have a Zoom room. So what you're saying is there's no boom boom in the Zoom room. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> I think Rev gets Fine. it. Rev gets it, Steve. That's right. Yeah. Which would mean not on my workout bench, Rev. I should have oh. zoomed him back yeah. in the day when he was watching my house. Whatever. It only happened couple times yeah. yeah this is uh this is these are just weird like these are weird problems that are propping up that we never thought would happen prior to february of la- of this year we, we no one would ever thought you'd have that these kind of conversations would be happening well it's funny because i was every morning after a hawks game i'll come in and i'll watch most of the press conferences from the players on you know go to seahawks.com and you can find them for clips for for the news report and whatever else and I'm watching jamal adams do his press conference he's answering all these questions great answers but towards the end someone asked him a question and then you just heard random noises while he was talking because the way they're doing the press conferences right now is there's Zooming in the reporters so that they're not in the room with the player. The player's at the podium, ah. and then whoever the handler is for the uh, for for um, for the Seahawks will be like, "Okay, Joe Fan, you have a question," or you know, whoever else is there, you have a question. And somebody asked a question to Jamal, but then didn't turn off their computer and kept the kept it unmuted. Oh, so you had like weird feedback and some sound in the background, probably someone making some noise in the kitchen, whatever it may be. Yeah. So after the question was done, the the, the handlers just like, "Uh, reminder to all the reporters, please mute your ca- your 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 laptop or your cell phone after asking your question." I was like, oh, yep, that's virtual etiquette right there. Well, people don't understand, first of all, listen, if you know you're going to talk a lot on Zoom, yeah, okay, you can take, you can unmute your microphone. Otherwise, if you want to pop in anytime you want, keep that mic on mute and press the space bar. It's designed so that you can unmute yourself quickly, but then you oh. let the space bar up. Oh, yeah, the push to talk. Yeah. What that, 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 if I, you're on your cell phone? You don't have that button. Oh, well, then, yeah, you're in a bit of trouble, aren't you? There must be something on the cell phone that's a push to talk, right? Oh, listen, mm. I remember when we were doing our radio convention uh, Zoom panel thing and all of a sudden lulu started barking i was like trying to find that button it was not easy yeah i know that was that was so funny it was like <laughs> it's just chaos in my house so i can't having a serious conversation nobody commented on, nobody commented on it of course i didn't because i because everybody but i had the gallery view on and i got such a oh. kick out of watching you when somebody else was speaking i mean what is steve doing and then i finally saw lulu in your lap but before i realized what it was it it's was like, like this little white hair keeps popping up from underneath the screen and then my head <laughs> i mean my hand goes on that head and pushes it back down yeah i'm like what is he doing in his crotch i just get my i was just like I don't know if you see. I it looked like a gilt thumbnail. Yeah, <laughs> but you like this get white hair. Yeah, it did. I was like, "Is he kidding? Is he? What is? I'm, I'm, I go. He can't be like. I wish pretending. that was. Yeah, I wish that was a bit like you were doing it on purpose, I, dude. At one point, I actually angled the camera more up so that way it wouldn't. Because I was like, "Oh man, there's some big, big wig radio people and us on this panel." <laughs> And I was like, I don't want to be that guy that's like got my dog on my lap. But Lulu was losing her mind. Like she kept pawing at me. So I'm like, okay. And then at one point she wanted to leave that room. So I had to get up and open the door. And I, as I got up, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I have pants on. Because as I did, I didn't even think about it. But like you guys saw me just get up and I'm in my pajama pants with like a decent shirt on. <laughs> I know. This is, I, I don't know if I want to do I this anymore. You. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't want to do this anymore with the Zoom thing because people just, for some reason, when they're in their house, they just act like idiots. But that was the moment where I realized, Okay, now I understand how someone can screw up and like walk, like get caught in their boxers 
on like a Zoom call. Oh, yeah. Because I didn't even think twice of it. I'm like, oh, mute myself. All right, I'm good. And then I got up and opened the door and I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> there you are. Uh, there I am wearing my pajama pants. I really enjoyed, I enjoyed watching you. I was like, that's why you got to leave the gallery on. Forget who's speaking. The real entertainment is with what everybody else is doing when the person's speaking. Yeah, well, my cell phone, it sucks because when you do a Zoom meeting that has more than four people, you can't do that. Oh, yeah. That's why I got a laptop. That's the only reason I got a laptop, just to mm -hmm. see the, the, the hijinks that you'll do when you're on a Zoom call. Well, it worked out well, though, because like, there's like, you know, a couple of attractive people on that call, and, and, and I was able to, they, they had them in the same little window. So I was like, all right, I'll just stick on that window. It was you and then a couple of the females. Oh, okay, so you did the females. Good job. Yeah, so you were part of it, though. Oh, well, you know what? Hey, listen, that's, cool. what, you call, that's what you call a sandwich, a pretty sandwich. You put the ugly in the middle of the pretty. Oh, well, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. say you were the ugliest. Wow. Oh. Well, you mean damn. Well, not out of the women, but you mean oh no, of, no, the no, women were attractive. Yeah. Oh, but, oh, out of the men. Damn, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you really don't think I was the ugly? Fired. I really thought I might have been the ugliest guy in that panel. You're saying no, no. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow. I really, you know what? I, I, I was, I was, I was actually judging myself, going, you know, everybody, I think looks good. I, this is bad. I, no, I tried. I tried my best, I thought, but you thought, actually thought I did okay. I thought you and I actually weren't like the scariest ones. I, that's really cool. Yes. I feel a lot better about myself now because people are going to see it this week. It's going to be broadcast. Oh, crap. Now they're going to be wondering who's the scary one I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. You, you thought it was over. Oh, no, it's going to be broadcast uh, this Wednesday. Oh, that's great. Yeah, there you go. Well, then everyone can watch. I don't know why Steve Miggs said that about another person on the panel. I can't understand it. Yep. Awesome. Do you want to at least say or give a hint? Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. Well, or pick out two of the ugliest people and say it's neck and neck and see if people can pick the winner? Well, it's not fair. That's, that's, you know, everyone's beautiful in God's eyes, BJ. Oh, I forgot about that. You're right. Okay. <laughs> back it up, back it up. Yep. Ooh. All right. Hey, what am I going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? Maybe not say that you think people are ugly. On, I on think some guys maybe you don't need to do plastic surgery like oh. for the rest of your life. Oh, like, man. There was a few guys oh. on there. Didn't you, didn't you agree? Uh, here's the, I, you know, it's funny you said that. Because I had the reverse opinion. Mm -hmm. I thought, I think I'm the only guy that hasn't done plastic surgery out of the people that are in my age group or over. over. You're absolutely right. And I thought, God, this is the new normal. Like, also, I, I'm the guy that has my own teeth. I haven't put veneers on. True. And I know that my teeth are not as white as they could be, probably because of the coffee. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm like, hey, every time I go to the dentist, they go, your teeth are great. They're in great shape. So it's like, why would I do anything to them if they're in great shape, except they're the not right color, which is, you know, basically uh, neon white, which is, if you noticed... There were people with some neon white teeth that I know aren't their real freaking teeth because I, I'm a guy with regular teeth who takes really good care of them, and this is what they look like for a normal person. Well, see, I wasn't even fixed on that. I was just watching thinking, like, wow, at some point, like, you got to just pump the brakes on the Botox. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, oh, yeah. especially, like, the older you get, it's yeah. like it, it doesn't. It's yeah. like there's parts of your skin that are like perfectly smooth and then other parts that aren't because it, Botox just can't do that. Exactly. Would you ever do Botox? No. Yeah, that seems like. It seems like people just get really hooked on it. Let me tell you the wonderful thing about being ugly. I paid for it in my early day, early years. It was horrible self-esteem. But when you realize, dude, this is great. Nobody expects you to be pretty, mm -hmm. which means when now I'm at this age and it's like, well, nobody's looking to me in a beauty contest, so I don't got to keep up anything. I get to just be what I am. And frankly, I think I've hit the point of no return. I don't think I can get uglier. I think I finally hit the ugly ceiling. And okay. even as I get older, I'm still going to be as ugly as I was. Or you maybe be like fine wine. Like you get better Ooh, as you get older. Older. That's even better if that yeah. happens. Or you turn to vinegar. That's a good point. Oh, well, there's that guy over there. Thanks, Rob. Oh, thanks, yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks half the, empty. The, the you you and Mitch ought to do a show together. Oh. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, you know you got to rethink life when BJ's saying that you're the miserable one. Uh, I guess maybe. You know what, though? That's another conversation for the time, but I think Rev has always known he's been my protege. Yes. Yeah, well, you've yeah. groomed him well. I have. Really, I've taught him everything I know. And then some. Yep. Yeah, so... Would anyone on this show do Botox? No. I felt like Danny would. You think wow. Danny would? Yeah, I really did. I felt like if anybody would, Danny would. No. Nah. I don't need Botox. Plus, I don't want no needle. Being, I don't know why. I He's already got his face pierced in every place. What, what difficult would it make to make a needle in it? I love that Steve's like, I don't want the needles in me. I know. I got tattoos everywhere. Like, on your entire body, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> it's different, though. Yeah. I, and uh, Vicky, I was... I, I, I don't needles in my face. Right. I don't know if Vicky would or not. It really depends. I, I, it's hard to say. say. No, I don't, I don't I mean, have any. But I mean, if somebody gave them to me for free, sure. I know a lot of girls that are in my age group that do it preventatively. Yeah, and like they, like the wrinkles on their eyes. It's mm -hmm. like what? I don't, I, Sarah just turned around. Like Sarah, come in here. So is oh, that? Yeah, oh, Sarah's been freaking out. Sarah she's wants almost everything. 30. Sarah wants all of the plastic surgery. Yeah. No, that's true. She's all about 
being plastic. This is the problem with being as light skinned as Sarah is, because, you know, as we know, uh, the darker your skin is, the, the, the more difficult it is to see these cracks. So the lighter spray your tan. Uh, I, well, that's it's what I would put in Botox. Sarah, you should spray tan. Okay, I don't know if I could pull off a spray tan. Yeah. We should all spray tan for one Yes, show. please. We should, actually. You, you saw how I looked for that holiday hangover ball. Okay, maybe not, not as much spray tan as you did. Oh, that. I thought I looked amazing. We'd all look like, like walking Oompa Loompas. Yeah. Uh, uh, in. Especially because you're so bald, so yeah. like your whole head would be like an orange color. Yeah. It'd be and we, awesome. And we should all wear our, uh, white shirts so that we have like spray tan stains. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah definitely. Is. How do they spray tan someone with a beard? Am I just going to have an orange beard at that point? That's a good question. I don't know these things. We'll have to either. get a, a professional spray tanner to answer that for you, buddy. That's so strange. I would so get Botox. I'm really thinking about it. Oh, Sarah. People told me to start getting it in your Why? early 20s because it's preventative. But I didn't listen to them because I'm like, I'm Who still young and beautiful. Like oh. the Kardashians? Probably. <laughs> I wish I talked to them. No, but like, I don't know, people who used, who wish they had gotten it before, right? And so now I'm almost 30 and I am seeing the wrinkles and I really wish I had started years ago. So I got to get on it. Except it's so expensive. That's what's stopping me. How expensive me. Good. is Botox? Good. Oh, hundreds yeah. and hundreds oh, of yes, dollars. Steve, of course. It's for a, one appointment. The beauty industry is insane. Oh, I mean, is there like a Groupon for something like that? Is like there, buy, do buy you, one wrinkle, get one re- do free? you want to go to a Groupon yes. Botox person who's sticking a needle in your head and you yes. want the discount guy? Okay. Yeah. I, want the, I want the buddy rate. Yeah. Hey, if it's cheaper, you know? But it uh, depends oh. how much you need. Excuse me, sir. Why are you, uh, why are you using a bicycle pump to put the Botox? <laughs> Talks in my face. Oh, don't worry, no, it's don't worry new, about it. It's a new way to do it. So. As long as it works, okay? Yeah. Well, I'm filling my wrinkles in with super glow. Yeah, I don't think yeah. that's... Uh, <laughs> why, why, yeah, what are you doing here, sir? Uh, Sarah, don't uh, do not do it. I'm, and, and now I know oh. that if money is a... Uh, if money's the issue, I'll make sure you don't have any. I'm going to do it, though. You know? Oh. I'm going to find someone who knows someone. Yeah. Who knows is that someone. the number one plastic surgery you'd want to get? Botox? Uh, I mean, I, I don't even consider it really plastic surgery. Well, what is it? It's just a few needles in your face that huh. make you look it, younger. It's basically acupuncture. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah so it's just acupuncture where they inject a foreign substance into your body and your body's like, great, we've got to deal with this now because she doesn't think but she's pretty. Doesn't it wear off and then you got to do it again? It does, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's where the problem is. Then you got a guy like in his 60s or 70s doing yeah. Botox and it's like... At and that point, like, you're smoothing out skin that really, it, it looks weird with the rest of your body. Yeah. Well, and you have to go every few months, depending how much you need. My friend just got it done, and she has to go back every three to six months now. That's the problem, is once you start, it becomes kind of an addiction, a how? very expensive oh, addiction. Oh, yeah, very, very And is expensive. it noticeable on her? Honestly, I couldn't notice it at all, but she's she just turned 26. So she's Wait, she's doing, 26 she's and she's doing, doing Botox? Yes, because she's smart. <laughs> She's smart. Because they're All saying of my it's friends. preventative. Do it while oh, you look young, and yeah. then they'll, you'll always look the same age. All ridiculous. of our friends gave her crap for it, but I'm like, dude, you're the one that's going to be looking way better than all of us in like 20, 30 years. Or maybe you just find a person in your life that likes the way you look, as opposed to having to change the oh, way you look for somebody. What kind of crazy talk is that, BJ? Yeah, I and, mean, and you have to like how you look in the mirror, See, right? I, first of all, no, you don't. Yeah, That's <laughs> going to a therapist. If you don't like how you look in the mirror, go talk to somebody. That's what you should go do, not Botox yourself. I mean, hey, if there's Botox is available, I don't like my boobs, so I want a boob job. You, yeah, you yeah. might as well fix Ooh. no what therapist you, Botox. It could be like a, a combo platter. You go the see thing. therapist. If it doesn't work out, we'll go see Dr. <laughs> Filler up right Seriously. next door. I'll go talk to someone for a few months and see if I like my wrinkles and my small boobs better. But if not, then I'm going to take drastic measures. Yeah, this is where I step up to the, that argument that I should be the one that's happy with how I'm, how I'm looking. Hey, look, I think you're absolutely right. But when you're not happy with how you look, that you're going to change. Change your body that nature didn't intend for you to change it. And, you know, Sarah, uh, mom has a friend that just got her. She got her breasts taken out because they were it ended up causing her a lot of medical problems. She had them in her body. More and more of these days from people that have uh, implant issues. Yeah, it's it's a big deal. I have friends who have implants for years and they've had no Uh, issues. No, this woman's in her 50s. You don't have any friends in their 50s. I do, actually. And she has fake boobs and has for years and has never had issues. Okay, well, you know what? Yeah, good. Well, guess what? Is she like your mentor in life? Yeah. Oh, man. I will. 50 year old woman with implants. Okay. I will show you her. Yeah. She is. I, I would love to look like that when I'm Do her I know age. this person? You do not know. Okay, good. Show me a picture because I'll I tell will. you. Because you know what? I love your mother and she's had no work done as far as I know. 
Yeah, I mean, and that's great. And it's- <laughs> I say that, but I mean, I, I love really it. There's know. actually just a small percentage of you not knowing. Well, I don't know what she's what's doing. Totally she, going she, down in California. She's in California for seven years. I don't know. Maybe she's had work done, and I'm just thinking that it's her. <laughs> yeah, you didn't notice her haircut. Now you didn't notice the smoothed out wrinkles. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, she looks. What she kind looks, of husband are you? She looks good to me. If she's been getting stuff done, she hasn't told me. It's not like she came out and said, "Hey, guess what I've been doing." As far as I know, she's had nothing done, but maybe she has. Well, she likes the way she looks, so that's all that matters. I'm just saying, I'm down. If you don't like the way you look and you can fix it, I'm so here for it. Or maybe you can go to the therapist and ask why you don't like the way you look if everybody else does. The therapist ain't going to make your boobs bigger, BJ. It's right? really not. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I'm, I, you know what? I don't know how I can do this anymore. I'm well. done with this child. I'm, apl- I'm taking applications for a new child. Sorry, you're okay. stuck with me. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> We got a scientist that won an award. Why? They're trying to figure out if an alligator's voice would sound different if it sucked helium. And the scientist won an award for this. We got the audio. You're going to hear it in 817 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Have you considered renting a car to take that family trip versus using your own car? According to AAA, it costs 50 cents per mile to operate a car. If you are planning a long trip, renting may be the better option. If you do rent a car before you take your trip, check with your auto insurer and credit card issuer to see what coverage they provide. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Farmer's Policy Perks are that little extra something you can get when you're a farmer's customer. So to tell you about them, we're adding a little extra something to this ad. A backup singer. Ooh, singer. When you have the Farmer's Signal app with Crash Assist. Crash Assist. If you have an auto accident. We can send help if you want it. Wow, that sounds like a whole lot of something. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available select farmers branded policy. Subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. I don't know if I'm familiar with this uh, Ig Nobel Prize situation, but they handed out the Ig Nobel Prize Awards. I feel like we've talked about it before because we were trying to figure out what the hell it was about. Oh, I forgot. a couple of years ago. I don't know if we ever remember what, or if we ever found out what it's about. Yeah, it's for usually the dumbest things that they do in science. Okay, so these are things that scientists think are important to study, but then this other group says, no, they're not important to study, so we're going to make an awards thing for how stupid you guys are. Like Sort of like, like the Razzies for the bad movies. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. But I don't know if they, the, these scientists necessarily think that this is important to study, or maybe they just think it's funny to study. It's the things they got funded for. Yeah, that's the thing. Like They're getting <laughs> really, paid I mean, to do this. Oh, I mean, you know, maybe they're just a bunch of stoners. They're like, hey, I'd, lo- I'd like to find out if this is actual, actually could happen. And then, well, listen, I don't fault the scientists because if you can get paid to do something that you think is fun, why not? I just don't know why anybody would fund this. Like, like, like somebody said, we're going to do a study on finding out whether knives made out of frozen human poop would be uh-huh. effective weapons. <laughs> Who That's would a- fund that? Me. Are we guaranteed to- that someone funded that? <laughs> Or was it just a group of scientists that were just really stoned and said, dude, we should try and figure out if we can stab someone with our poop. (laughs) And then they just got to work on like maybe around 530 in the afternoon when they're done with their actual scientist stuff. Maybe they work for like a diapers company or something like that. And, and then they said, hey, like, let's stick around the office a little bit later and let's work on this. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. And I don't know if, see, then if you know there's an Ig Nobel Prize Award, which is sort of like, you know, the Razzies for science, do you then like do that, Steve, and go, hey, maybe we'll get an award. We're, we're not going to get paid for any of this, but if we get the award, how funny would that be? Because there was another scientist that said, hey, you know what I want to do? I want to see how helium affects alligator voices. And this was a uh, this was a study that was funded apparently, um, you know, and they want to know will helium affect an alligator's voice the way it affects a human voice? How do we know that, again? Like though, th- th- I don't know. Like, we keep saying things are funded. I don't know if that necessarily anyone put a dime into this. It could have just been a scientist that's like, I got helium and I've got alligators. Let's see what happens. And so they, if that's the case, then maybe they just throw it up to a website so people will know that these are things that were done. So they oh, get I bet these there's a, awards. I bet there's a badge of honor. It's ignoble. Uh, prize thing has been going on for 30 years according to this website it's the 30th anniversary of the awards and it's held at harvard so it's a it's held at harvard so uh, you think harvard would know people are just goofing on us 
Is it, because I get before, I get maybe somebody was really serious, wanted to do research 30 years ago, mm-hmm. and then people go, this is the dumbest thing. Who funded this? But now you're, you're alleging, and you may be right, Steve, that people know about this award, so they just do things in their own time. Well, they definitely know about the award. If they have a ceremony for it and people go to it, they yeah. have to know about it. So now, I, I, like now I'm a troll guy because early, when it first started, I bet real scientists were doing this thinking their work was good. And they go, no, you're an idiot. No one should have ever funded this. Now you got people intentionally trying to get this award if they're not oh, I, yeah they're not being paid why the hell waste your time unless you think you can get this dumb award i mean i would imagine that in any line of work you got a sense of humor you want to have some fun maybe get a little levity to the things and they're like hey like let's work on this maybe we'll get the Ig Nobel award for that well here's what really bothers me is i thought all right maybe we'll get to hear an alligator on helium um but instead one of the authors of the alligator study inhaled some helium then explained how the study worked Our subject was a Chinese alligator. We recorded her inhaling normal air and heliox, a helium oxygen mixture. And here we go. Here's one call in air and one call in heliox. They sound different. And this is evidence that also non-avian reptiles have resonances in their vocalizations. They deserve an award for that. That is amazing. All right. Well, at least I, you know, I, I thought we weren't going to get to hear the alligator, but he did let us hear the alligator. Boy, that <laughs> was from, great. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you can tell a difference. Yeah, yeah. Well, here are the other Ig Nobel Prize winners. Yeah, I'm actually curious. Uh, researchers that found people who study insects are usually afraid of spiders. Now, here's the thing: they would have to talk to a lot of researchers, and that's got to cost money. Or do they just go, "All right, on my off hours, I'll call everybody on the phone that I know is a researcher." How do? You know what I mean? It's like, how do you find out that they're afraid of spiders if you're not spending time or money? I don't know. You can throw it on Facebook and ask your friends. <laughs> you're right. That's what be the easy way to do it. Here's an economic study that tried to connect a country's wealth inequality with its average amount of mouth-to-mouth kissing. Again, how do you find this out? Facebook again? Yes. Twitter. Okay. That one. And right, no, more, more like TikTok. That seems like the, the right place to find out about tonsil yeah. hockey. And a psychology study that tried to figure out a way to tell if someone's a narcissist by examining their eyebrows. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right. You I know, mean, you see some people and like their eyebrows just look like they're sculpted. They have to be narcissists. Here's what I would say to you, Steve. Yes. If you're right, I'm okay with this. But if you're wrong and people are getting paid for this, I am so angry. Why? I actually, because I am paid. Who gives a crap? I can't. Uh, no, I, I'm angry that like someone's got enough money that they would fund this study. You I know think what I'm it's saying? fantastic. Yeah. So that's what I want to know. I wish they would tell us next you've, year. You've never just like spent money doing stupid things. I do that well, almost every night. Yeah. Guys. Me I'll, too. I'll impulse buy things, and I'm like, as soon as I hit click purchase, I'm like, why did I buy that? So that's what you guys say. That's why I'm afraid if you guys hit the lottery, you would be doing oh, things like absolutely. this. Absolutely. I already have a plan that like I'm pro if I win the lotto, I'm gonna give you guys like stuff, but it's going to be like terrible things. Like BJ, Fantastic. I'm going to help you create the bridge of the Starship Enterprise, but whenever you go through the doors, it makes farting noises instead of the whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> Yeah, this is you know what you can do if you hit the you what can you gonna do lottery? for me. Uh, just forget you know me. Oh, okay, cool. Then I don't have to owe you anything. That's perfect. Uh, Steve, I was just thinking about having a wrestling ring. I think it's going to be kind of along the lines of the same sort of like fart thing. So whenever like you land on it, it just makes a farting noise. <laughs> That's pretty much what happens in but real life anyway. Second. So I'm in. <laughs> Aren't you? I th- but you know that would troll me. Aren't you going to do something that would troll Steve? Because Steve likes that. Well, I haven't thought it all the way through. Okay, great. So basically, some time before he wins the lottery. No, it's, you know what he's saying? He's saying, look, if I win the lottery, you all get great stuff that you'll love except BJ. Or maybe everything he gives us involves farting sounds. No, that's Quite why possibly. I don't like it. He knows I, don't, he knows I don't like the farting. No, at one point he told me that he was going to buy Vicky a house, but everything was going to be just out of reach for her. So oh, yeah. <laughs> everything was like the house is going to build, be built like 1.5 times bigger. Yeah. It's funny. So all the cabinets, she needs a ladder. <laughs> yeah. Not a like step stool, but an actual a ladder. ladder. So what you're saying is, is if you are fortunate enough that the gods in the universe give you a boon, you are going to troll people. Oh, absolutely. That is, uh, boy, talk about paying it forward. I think you're actually paying it backward. But anyway, hey. But you'll you have something you. really cool. Yeah. You do you. Ish. I'm all looking right. at like what happened in the past. I was just trying to find like what other examples of of ridiculous things they've done. And I guess a couple years ago or a year ago, it looks oh, actually twenty yeah twenty nineteen. They uh, measured the pleasure of scratching an itch oh. to figure out what's the most uh, pleasurable spot of your body that you itch. And oh. it's uh, the ankle and the back are the most pleasurable. 
Oh, back scratches are the best. All right, now, in order for this to happen, they definitely have to t- spend a lot of time, If they, unless it's not a legitimate thing, and they talk to five people. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. But, dude, if someone hit me up and said, hey, can you scratch yourself and let me know what's the most pleasurable part? I'd be like, all right, that's going to take me two minutes. I'll message you back. Yeah, but I don't then. I how much time it's going to really take. No, not you, but I mean, then they got to, how many people are going to talk to to go, you know what, here's what we found. I mean, you know, a, a thousand people, plug 2, it into people? a computer and the answer just comes up. It's, it's not you, like it's like a pen you, and a paper. Are you sure about that? I, last time I checked, you're not a survey guy. I'm not, but I'm just saying. How hard is it? You get a pen and a paper and plug it into the computer. No, That's I said you don't need a pen and a paper. You just type in the answers and then you hit like, boom, and it gives you all the studies. Boom. Boom. That's right. right. I'm sure they have software for all this. All right, let me ask you this because I feel like your standards are going to be very low. How many people do you think you need to talk to for it to be a survey to represent everybody? A thousand. Okay, there we go. And that's the problem with America right there. Well, isn't that how we live and die by a thousand people in the radio I, I, world? I, I am with you, dude. <laughs> I am, I, I'm 100% with you on that. And when you've got a country of three million people, pretty right. much, uh, 300 million people, you know, uh, and you got a thousand people talking for them, how cool is that? I don't well, know. Well, the other 299 plus million are a little busy right now. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. When they, oh, they're a little busy right yes. now? Yes. <laughs> but so but not, not too busy to find out how to itch yourself. Well, I mean, I think that the ankle would be the most pleasurable for me. Oh, it's still the back for me. It's the back under the bra. Just like scratch oh, yeah. on in there. Same oh, for me as well. <laughs> yeah, same thing for me. How does freaking out? Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. The back under the bra. Steve, you never tried the back under the bra. No. I'm not. I, I think it's the type of bras I buy. They don't make me itchy. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right. So Steve's an ankle, back under the bra for both the three of us. Danny, what's your best <laughs> place to scratch? The balls. <laughs> Why did I ask you? Well, I mean, I mean he's I mean, not really, wrong. He is, is really it? isn't that wrong. That is the best thing Thinking in the entire world. Yeah. yeah. They didn't have that on the study, though. You know what? Here's the thing. I don't think, I fairly, I don't think I've given them a fair shot because I have to bend down too far. Oh. Ew. You just catch them with your feet. Oh, that's, a, that's an image. Oh, it's like hacky sack. There you go. No, it's more like that paddle on the ball thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Okay, yeah, I see yeah. where you're going with I that. Hacky sack, you can lose that. Okay. That's true. Okay. It's not attached to anything. Oh, well, that's lovely. <laughs> Things I didn't need to envision this morning. Well, hey, you, you brought it up. It. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, it's your fault. Yeah. Well, I feel like that's just as legitimate of a study as they did. Oh, I won't argue with that. <laughs> Give us the ignoble. Yeah. All right, there's a new app out there, and uh, this is disturbing. It's called Mole. And basically, this new app lets you hire anonymous strangers to work as your spies. Ooh. What? what it's like we Mission do? Impossible. Yeah, you go on Mole, post that you want to see a live video of a certain location, then someone else on Mole who's near that location can get paid a few bucks to live stream it for you. How? What? I mean, dude, no. I mean, you have to be pretty pathetic of a human being to like, be like, I'm going to hire you. I mean, on both ends. I'm, I'm willing to do the job, and the person willing to ask someone to do the job are equally as pathetic. Yeah, you know, now, maybe if you want to go see, like, how long the restaurant line is, and you want to say, hey, before I go out to that restaurant. But that's not what people are going to use it for. Exactly. But these are the examples they give. So they're trying to make it seem like it is not, you know, horrible. Like, or maybe you want to see the Eiffel Tower live right now. But I'm with you, Steve. I think this is like, I really wonder what Steve is doing. Right. When he goes, he says he's going here. All right. I want you to stand by that location and see if Steve shows up. Yeah. Jessica's going shopping. Can you make sure she really is? Yeah. Like, okay. And who's Jessica? I don't know who Jessica is, but she should be mold. That's all I... But you know what? We are now in a society where... See anything without going anywhere. App-driven employment, where basically somebody just requests you to be their servant, whether, you know, right, right now it's be my, be, my, be my valet, if I want to talk Dunton Abbey style. Be my driver. I mean, we have that. That's the app-driven servant situation. Be my driver's servant. Now they want you to be my spy servant. Yeah. And can you pick up uh, some McDonald's on the way back to my place? So it's like, yeah. it's Uber Eats meets Mole. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Dude, seriously, though, if they had this, and you're, where would you go if your wife decided to see if Ricky Henderson was going to some fast food places and she molded every fast oh, food place around your house? I don't need that. You'd be that. screwed. You'd be done. I'm already screwed. Yeah. I forgot. That. Yeah, yeah, I got some McDonald's the other night. And it's oh. like, hey, I saw this. She's like, I... What did you get at McDonald's? I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. I used my credit card. All right. Are you ready for Very this? smart, Steve. Maybe your wife isn't the one doing it, but maybe a friend that says, if you don't pay me X amount of dollars, I'm going to hire a bowl, and then they're going to report to me, and I'll report to your wife. This is, this is bad application everywhere. You can look at it. We know that this is solely going to be used by uh, people that are jealous 
and are, 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 are had this thought in their head that their significant other is cheating on them. Yeah. I, unless they have that as a rule that you can't use it for. And if they do, then how are they going to make any money? <laughs> right? <laughs> well, let's see that. I think we've solved Mole's problem. We're going to send a mole to France to make sure France is cool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, France, you cool? You cool, France. Uh, oui, oui. France is cool. <laughs> All right, we're good. Uh, Don't go traveling, but experience everything. Agents are waiting. Oh, this is weird. Well, you, you, yeah, when it sounds like that, yeah, it sure does. And do you talk to your mole, like, or does he just show pictures? And she, or she, I mean, that's weird too. Or you yeah, know, I what mean, no. I, Vicky, look into this. Yeah. Are you gonna download it? I need to hire someone to, to to see if Vicky will look into this. I need to go on mole to make sure Vicky does her job. It's got uh, three and a half stars uh, uh, with fifteen ratings yeah. on on App Store review. Okay, uh, yeah. So there you go. You know, with all the things that Apple says, I won't put in the iStore, uh, the, the you know, but in the iTunes store, they put this in the App Store. Want to get a glimpse of the Eiffel Tower at sunset while eating breakfast at home, or you want to check back in your neighborhood when they're when you're thousands of miles away? And before I go, how many people are lined up outside of that club? Oh, though, if I could hook it up to my Apple TV, which goes to my big screen TV, it'd be kind of fun to see a live scene something while I'm just sitting. There. So you're gonna hit up some random stranger, be like, hey, can you? Uh, can you video the Eiffel Tower right now? I want to see it. I'm at home. Well, what if you up. what if you do the virtual reality though? That's where that could be interesting. If you actually could, you know, virtually put the glasses on and it makes you feel like you're there. Maybe mm-hmm. that would be cool. I mean, that would be. I got a concert. I can't make it to the concert when they play. You know, I don't know when when ACDC kicks into a song that I want to hear. Can you turn on your camera so I can see it? Oh, that won't annoy everybody around you. Like well, people are already, they already do that. I mean, so that's now, what Periscope is for. Oh, so now that's what people are going to be mulling at concerts. Well, you see that at concerts where someone's like, Sheila, I'm at the show, they're playing our song. And then you point the camera at the Yeah, the band. you're right. And everyone's like, point it back at yourself and sing along with that person on FaceTime. And I guess I, I guess at <laughs> least if I know people are making money, making a living, I can be a little you know, not less mad at them for using their phone and putting it in my face in front of my face during a concert. Oh, this thing needs to, you got to buy coins and stuff apparently too. <laughs> yeah, that's how they get you, man. Oh, really? 14. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it'll cost you, uh, you know, like 15 coins, but they only sell them in 20 coin packs. Right, oh. you want to see the tip of the Eiffel Tower, I need 15 more coins. Oh, okay. That didn't sound right. <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> You know what I mean. I don't know. Actually, I don't <laughs> Actually, know Actually, yeah, mean. we kind of don't. I really don't know, and I don't want to know. Uh, on Friday, Steve got this one right. Which rapper collaborated with Korn on the song Children of the Corn? Um, that would be Vanilla Ice. No. Uh, <laughs> Ice Cube? <laughs> yes. Oh, nice job, buddy. Yeah, pretty good. All right, you want a shot at beating Steve? All right, you got it. 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Beat Mix at 847 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. How long is a bankruptcy going to affect my credit rating? Of course, most of the time, by the time we're we're talking about filing a bankruptcy, the credit has already taken a huge hit. Uh, Chapter 7 is going to affect it more negatively than Chapter 13. Uh, Chapter 7 stays on your credit report for 10 years from the time you file. It usually takes 7 or 8 years for your credit scores to get back into the normal range in a Chapter 7 case. However, your credit will start to recover even in Chapter 7 after about a year. Um, You'll be able to get credit again right away, usually before uh, your case is even over. Uh, chapter 13 stays on your credit report for seven years and usually takes about three or three and a half years for your credit to get back in the normal range. So chapter 13 uh, will mean your credit gets better much more rapidly. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Many of us face a financial crisis at some time in our life, but who do we turn to for help? Promises to eliminate any portion of your debt or legitimate credit items should raise a red flag. A good place to start is the National Foundation for Credit Counselors, or NFCC. Visit nfcc.org. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit kisw.com slash BECU.